Amen. Turn to Proverbs chapter 1, please. Hallelujah. I'm beginning a new series tonight just for Wednesday night. Praise God. I'm going to be doing a wisdom series. Hallelujah. Praise God. Taken from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. Amen. Understand that Proverbs is not like other books in the Bible. As I teach you in other books in the Bible about uh, the continuation uh, of whatever subject matter you're talking about. You may be looking at two or three chapters to get the context, uh, amen, of a particular verse and to get it right. Proverbs isn't that way. Proverbs is just that, a different proverb. What its purpose is, is to give you nuggets here and there of wisdom. You can have one or two verses talk about one thing and then completely go to something else because it's not intended to be like other books of the Bible. Hallelujah. Now, of course, you got 31 chapters in Proverbs, and I'm not going to walk you through 31 chapters, although I could, but I'm not going to do that. But what I'm going to do is take topics in Proverbs and go through varying topics in Proverbs, hallelujah, that would tell us, because the book of Proverbs tells you everything, how to handle your money, it tells you if you're single what to do. It tells you if you're married what to do. It tells you if you're divorced what to do. It tells you, praise God, if you don't have a job or you have a job. I mean, there's nothing in life that human beings deal with that Proverbs doesn't say something about it. Amen. Amen. So I intend to cover a whole host of subjects every Wednesday night right. on Proverbs. And we'll start with Proverbs chapter 1. And we'll begin with verse 7. Praise the Lord which reads, the fear of the Lord. Everyone say that. The fear of the Lord. That's the first thing that we will see here right here in chapter 1. The fear of the Lord, underline, is the beginning or the start point of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge, of course, is information. Some people say knowledge is power. Certainly it is to some degree, Knowledge, but knowledge alone is not enough. Amen. You can have an accumulation of knowledge and not have the other requirements necessary, which are wisdom and understanding. But it is the start point. The, the start point of the fear of the Lord, which we will get into in a minute, the start point of the fear of the Lord, praise God, it is the start point of knowledge, but fools, who? Fools, fools despise wisdom, and instruction. Now, the word instruction means chastisements and warnings. And what wisdom is, wisdom is the ability to take knowledge and use it successfully. You know, you can take knowledge and use it unsuccessfully. You can take knowledge, take it too far, and you can harm yourself with it. You need wisdom connected to it. Hallelujah. And so the fear of the Lord is the start point of knowledge or information. Fools despise wisdom, and that, that's, of course, to some extent, wisdom is uh, getting how to use knowledge successfully. And instruction, of course, is chastisement of warnings. So a fool doesn't listen when they are warned. And a fool does not understand that everyone here needs to get spanked sometime. I don't care if you're 65 or 5. It's just the methodology changes. The very next verse says, So my son, hear the chastisement and warnings of thy father, and forsake not the Torah, the law of your mother. Now, the fear of the Lord is the topic here he's going to talk about. So in the same chapter, take a look at verse 23 at what he says here. Turn ye at the reproof, the word reproof, and of course you can see that word reproof in Timothy as well, and Timothy talks about the word of God. But he said, turn ye at my correction, or reproof. Look, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. God being willing to pour out his spirit on you 
and God willing to make known unto you what he says, make it known to you, is big. Keep reading. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand. Nobody takes it. But you have said it not, or you are not listening to my counsel and would none of my correction. I also will laugh at your calamity then. And I know what the father says. Uh, and I will mock when, you, when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Okay? In other words, comes quickly. And a lot of times comes ferociously. And oftentimes when this comes, it comes so quickly, you don't have a chance to now straighten it out. Some people always think, well, uh, I'll always have time to repent. You don't know that. Amen. Amen. So he says here, praise God. And when anger is coming upon you, then shall they call upon me. Oh, yeah. Now they want to call upon me. He said, I won't answer you. They shall now seek me early. They ain't going to find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge. I tried to give them information. Remember the parable of the sower. Back to good ground. Parable of the sower. The first seed by the side of the road. The knowledge was put forth. The word of God. The person didn't want to hear it. So there was nothing else Satan had to do. He just took it from him. So now he don't, doesn't have that knowledge over there. Praise God. And then Satan's going to get to do what he wants unhindered without even a fight. So it says here, praise the Lord, they hated knowledge and did not, did not choose the, here it is again, fear of the Lord. So we'll get deeper into that, but underline that. They were none of my counsel and they despised all of my reproof. They, they despised all of my correction. Praise the Lord. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit or the development of their own way be filled with their own devices for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them you know you can have prosperity and that prosperity can be prosperity of fools amen, amen. a lot of people running after prosperity and prosperity is legitimate and it's scriptural. Done right, handled right, right hard about it. The prosperity of fools is when you think. Again, he says it's in the New Testament in Timothy, 1 Timothy 6.10, for example. Okay, he said the love of money is the root of all evil. And then the next verse says those who follow that same path run themselves through with many uh, tests, trials, and arrows. So there's the prosperity of fools, and that will show, show destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me, or of course his knowledge, his understanding, his instruction, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. And so we already see that there is protection in knowledge of God, wisdom of God, instruction of God, Praise God. But all of it starts with, first, the fear of the Lord. Now, let's go a little further in chapter 8. Amen. Since we're in Proverbs talking about this, opening session on this wisdom of God. So the first wise thing he's telling you is that get the word of God, man, and whatever it tells you to do, accept it. Amen. Including, if it's not what you want to hear. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says, the fear of the Lord is, there you go. So now he is going to define what the fear of the Lord is for you. The fear of the Lord is to hate. Now, you know, I kept looking up in the Hebrew, because I do that, I study language. So I, I look up in the Hebrew with the word hate, man, you know, and all of that. And uh, maybe there was a, another definition I can give you, one that would be a little bit more sanguine for, you know, 2023 and, and all of that. Hallelujah. 
And when I did it, I found out that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil means hate. It means exactly what it says. If the fear of the Lord is to, I can't stand this. I hate it. Right? When you hate something, man, praise God, you generally want to dead. I hate snakes. Anytime I see them, I kill them. I do. When I see a snake, he dead. Hmm? Why? Because I hate snakes. My wife came home with one of the funny snakes one day. And she got one right now in the kitchen. She, <laughs> she came home with this thing, and I came home, came in, and she had this thing sitting on the counter, I guess. I don't know what she was doing. <laughs> came in, this thing was this uh, rubberized snake thing was, sit, was sitting on it. I walked. <laughs> I got ready to <laughs> wham. <laughs> we doing that, girl. So the fear of the Lord is to hate, hate evil. And then he's going to notice what's after evil. No, 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 no. Notice language. What's after evil? Not a comma there. Mm -hmm, colon. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So now then what does that tell you? He's going to describe what the evil is. Right? Do I have any English teachers in here? Am I right? She said, I'm right. Cool. All right. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Here's the evil. Pride goes before a fall. Arrogancy, swelling. Okay, you big now. And the evil way. What's the evil way? The evil way is the same thing as what sin is. Sin uh, we used to say it, uh, it's missing the mark, but I think a better way to say it is missing the mark. Sin is going the opposite of whatever God says the way to go. Okay? If God says go this way, for you to decide to do that way instead is one pride, because you have now decided I know more than God. First of all, amen. And why does God have all these? And he, doesn't, he doesn't, actually don't have a whole lot, as you may think. Why does God have all these thou shalt nots? The reason for the thou shalt nots, per se, is because God loves you so much, he knows that this stuff will hurt you. That's the reason. Not that he's trying to keep you from fun or he's trying to keep you from something else. He's trying to keep you from getting jacked up. That's what he's trying to do. Just like parent with a kid, right? I mean, I've told my kids that some certain stuff you just do not touch. You do not touch it. Why? Because I know if you do, what it will do to you. And they may not know that their friends may have it. Other stuff may have it. So now they have to decide whether or not they're going to, they one, know more than I do since I am their parent and they're young. Two, whether or not, praise God, they have uh, so much wisdom and understanding that they can discern for themselves. Amen. So we're looking at a situation where he says, hate evil, pride. Here's the next one. Arrogancy and the evil way and the what kind of mouth? Forward mouth. What is a forward mouth? The word forward there is perverse. A perverse mouth or speaks perversity. Now, we, we obviously think that perverse mouth means cussing. Right? Clearly it is. But from God's view, it is much wiser than cursing. Perverse mouth means to speak words that do not help you. Let me read you the words of Jesus and remind you of that. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. Give me three hallelujahs, please. In Matthew chapter 12, once again, Jesus said here in verse 34, well, let me back up to verse 33. He said, now look, you either make the tree good in the, in the, his, his fruit, the tree is a his. Understand what he's talking about? Make his fruit good, or else make the tree or him, his tree corrupt, his fruit corrupt. The tree is known by his fruit. Generation of snakes, vipers. How can ye be an evil speak good things? Why not? 
Because out of the surplus of the heart, the mouth speaking. Okay? So whatever you've been putting in there through your ear gate, your eye gate, your own mouth gate, okay, amen, whatever you've been putting there, words, get into your spirit man. And when eventually when you have an abundance of whatever, when you are squeezed, whatever's in abundance is what's going to come out. So he says, a good man out of the good treasure, that word treasure is deposit, good deposit of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of evil deposit bringeth forth evil things. I'm telling you that every idol, the word argus in the Greek, okay, every word that is useless, every word that is empty, is another Greek uh, meaning for this word, also means unemployed. An unemployed person is somebody who's not working. Right? So it says, every unemployed word that men shall speak, they shall give an account in the day of Christus, the Greek word for judgment, which means in the day of tests and trials, uh, accusation and condemnation, praise the Lord. For by your words you shall be freed or made innocent and justified, and by thy words you shall be condemned or guilty in front of God, Satan, demons, angels, and people. So from God's standpoint, God hates for mouth. Because the fourth mile opens the door for the enemy to, to put a whooping on his kids. You see? Words matter. Death and life's in the power of the tongue, the Bible yes. said. Hallelujah. Where's that? Proverbs, another day. Let's add some more to this. Amen. Turn to Proverbs chapter 9. Amen. So we're already learning certain things about what we ought to key on. And what God just don't like. He says in verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, one of the definitions of the word wisdom is skillful. And so when I say that wisdom is the ability to use knowledge successfully, another way I can say that, wisdom is the ability to use knowledge skillfully. Okay, amen. Skillfully use it. Amen. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Understanding, uh, amen, means having a meaning. Not just what, but why. How things work when you have understanding. Okay, amen? You may have some knowledge, okay, that it works. You may have some wisdom of how to use it, but that doesn't mean you have, have this. Understanding. Let me make it more simple with a car. You may have the knowledge... Amen. And you did come in here. You had a key. You had a vehicle of some type. You opened the door. You got in. You either pressed the button because the key was in your pocket or you put the key in and turned. Either way. So you have that knowledge. Okay. You have enough wisdom with it to know I am not going to drive this thing into a building. I'm going to use this knowledge to get me from point A to point B. I ain't going to be stupid with it. But that doesn't mean you know how a car works. You don't know why when you turn the key, things happen. The more you understand, now if, if, you're, if you're training to fly aircraft like I did, they don't just want you to know how to fly a plane. They want you to know how the plane works. Everything about it. They want you to know how it works. So you need to understand some stuff about aircraft mechanics. You need to understand some things because that could be a life-saving issue that help you solve a problem at 30,000 feet. Okay, amen? So you can see what some of these differences may be a little bit up. Now, so let's read that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, hate evil, pride, arrogancy, evil way, fort mouth. Knowledge of the holy is understanding Praise God. You understand who God is and how he works. That's why we study the Bible. And yes, you can understand God. Remember, the Bible told us what? It told us that, that very thing. Well, what did it tell us about the grace of God? Uh, amen. It told us grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord according as his divine power has granted unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness 
through the knowledge of him, oh, praise God, called us to glory and virtue and much more. In other words, you can understand, the more you understand about the Father, the more you understand about the Son, and the character, who they are, how they think, why they do, what they do, that's one of the reasons why you have an Old Testament. Okay? Show you what men did, how God responded. In fact, praise God, you know, I read books people don't read. I read books like Obadiah. Oba, 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 who? <laughs> I read books like that in the Bible. Why? Because it didn't tell you how God thinks about stuff. Okay? It didn't tell you how he thinks about stuff, how he approaches stuff. You know God has a personality. Yeah, where do you think you got yours from? Yeah, he got a personality. He sure does. Amen. There's some, there are certain things about the Father, certain things about the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. So the more information, knowledge, and understanding that you have, the easier it is for your faith to work. See, I know the character of God, and I really know that God loves me because that's his character, and I really know he wants me to, to be blessed along these lines. I'm going to have no trouble doubting it. I can operate in faith. Thank you for all the amens I'm getting here. Verse 11, for by me, that is fear of the Lord, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, by, for by me thy days shall be multiplied and the years of your life shall be increased. He just said you will live longer because of this information. Most people don't want to die at 40. Or 50, or 60, or even 70. How many want to live past 80? Let me see here. Turn around. Take, take a look. Everybody in here. How many of you would like to live as long as you can? He just told you. You can lengthen how long you are here, or you can shorten how long you are here based on what you do, including what I talked about Sunday. Are you listening to me? So there are reasons why people are not still here who should be. And it's not because of God. It is because of decisions they made. So it's time to grow up now. So you don't stop blaming God for everything. He, he ain't your problem. He's your answer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, now, let's go on, praise God, chapter 10, and take a look at verse 27. It says, the fear of the Lord. What is it? Tell me what it is. Fear of the Lord is what? Hate what? Evil. Pride. Arrogancy. The evil way. Forward mouth. You're going to have to learn this. Let's go back again. The fear of the Lord is do what? Hate evil. Pride, arrogancy, evil way, forward mind. Those five. Memorize those five. Okay? Because that, every time you read the fear of the Lord, now I know what he's talking about. Okay? Amen. All right. So, chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord. I hate evil, pride, arrogance, the evil way, forward, forward mind. What does it do for me? It prolongeth days, which means it add to it. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Mm. See, so again, he just told you again, uh, amen, that the cleaner you live, the longer you live. Because sin shortens your life. Yeah, it does. It messes your body up. It messes your mind up. It messes you up. It causes you to be in situations where you can get killed, where you, you shouldn't even have been there with people you shouldn't have been with. Right. Hallelujah. At times you shouldn't have been there. It will cause you not to listen to God. It will cause you to put things in your body you should never have done it that breaks your body down. It will cause you to have worry, fear, trepidation, all that. And God says, since I'm trying to tell you and you won't listen to me, I'll just laugh at you then. Chapter 14, Proverbs. Amen. 
we're going to have some time, we're going to have some fun with this book, because there's a whole bunch of wisdom in this book, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Wee! Hey, Amen. And man camp recently, man, I just walked the guys through just a little bit of it. Hallelujah. Just for men stuff. Okay. Amen. All right, so uh, Proverbs chapter 14, notice verse 26. In the fear of the Lord, what is that? Hate, evil, huh? Pride, what? Arrogancy, what? Evil way, forward mouth. Tell me again without me telling you. Fear the Lord is what? In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. That word there, strong confidence, means strong hope and strong trust. Okay. And his children, that man who operates in the fear of the Lord, his children shall have a place of refuge. Yeah. Re refuge means shelter. The man that walks in the fear of the Lord, his children will be safe. Yeah. Amen. They'll be safe. They won't be put in danger. As a pastor, how many, unfortunately, how many times have I had to deal with situations whereby the uh, parents operated in a certain way, or the people at least who sired the children, operated in a certain way, and the people who paid the price for it, house got shot up, somebody got killed, was, was their kid. I've had to deal with that. Amen. The kid paid the price because of the actions of the parents. I've been doing this long enough to have to have deal with that. Good. Amen? Amen? But when, when the parent has, uh, has uh, uh, children have parents who operate in the fear of the Lord, then they're safe. My children don't have to be concerned about the drug dealer trying to get me and accidentally get them. Or the drug dealer decided he couldn't get me, so he took one of my kids or killed one of my kids. Or threaten one of my kids because I don't do drugs. You understand? So a lot, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> many things happen that shouldn't happen. And people say, why did God let this happen? Proverbs tells you and other places in the word tells you, God will let happen whatever you allow. In other words, he says, <clears throat> how I am protecting you is with my knowledge, my wisdom. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> what I'm telling you, that's your protection. Yeah. And that, living that way, allows my Holy Spirit and angels of God, because they operate according to the word of God, right. Psalm 103. They operate according to the word of God, the angels do. And so that's what keeps you protected. But when you get outside of doing what he says and the way in which he lives, you are playing Russian roulette with your life. Amen. I mean, you know what Russian roulette is? Yeah. That's when you take a pistol back in the day, okay, and when they had, they still do have revolvers, right? But you, but, you know, you have a six-shot revolver and you put in each cylinder a bullet in five of the six cylinders. They call that Russian roulette. Click. Or maybe they put three in there, but you don't know. <clears throat> so you're operating with Russian roulette, and just because you got away with it doesn't mean you will get away with it the next time. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, and people talk about why is all right there in Proverbs. The other thing you got to know is you don't know everything about nobody. No, you don't. Amen. I've been married to Pastor Deborah 48 years. I don't know anything about her. She don't know everything about me. After all those years. I mean, we've been living together, married, for 48 years, almost half a century. I still don't know everything about that. And I still find out stuff even now. I'm like, huh? What? We're all like that. Because human beings are complex. Amen? We are very complex. Very complex. Okay, amen? All right. Note what verse 27 says. The fear of the Lord 
is what I'm trying to get when you drive home you're going hate evil <laughs> Okay, verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. It calls you to what? Depart from the what? Trap of death. You mean there's traps of death? Yeah, man, Satan's trying to get you into a trap so he can kill you. But you got to fall into the trap. If Satan could have just take, because he wants you dead right now. He wants you dead now. The reason why you are not dead is because he couldn't get you. Now, there are a number of reasons why you couldn't, couldn't get you. One of them might have been you hate evil, pride, eggs, and evil way for his mouth. Okay, amen? But if he, if he could, he would kill you, and he's always set in traps. Which is why you have to listen to the Holy Ghost. He tried to kill me a number of times. Mm-hmm. All right, let's add some more. Anybody get anything out of this? Yes. Proverbs chapter 15, let's read verse 23. 32, excuse me. Verse 32, Proverbs 15. I like 23, man, it's joy by answering his mouth. I like that one. That's, that's another lesson. Uh, verse 32, he that refuses correction, that's the word instruction, he hates his own soul. He that obeyeth Chastisement getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before you are honored, first comes humility. Humility. What do you mean humility? Why humility? Because you feel like it should be this way. You think it should be this way. But amen. But the word of God says something different and you make a decision. The word of God is the highest authority of all. So I bow down to what he said, even if I don't feel it yet, or I may think yet, I don't understand yet, but I'm going to bow down to him. That's why, praise God, the Bible is God speaking to you. What do you decide to do when God speaks to you? Do you go, yes, Lord, or do you, I don't know about that? Okay. But he said, for what comes along with humility is honor. God will exalt you, cause you to be lifted up in your life at a higher stage and place than you would have been otherwise. Yes. Notice verse 6, chapter 16 of Proverbs. It says, by mercy and truth, iniquity or sin is purged or removed. And by the fear of the Lord, Men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he make up even his enemies to be at peace with him. Yeah. 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 Oof, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't mean that they won't hate you, but they will respect you. Now, me and the mayor, a former mayor of the city of Detroit, he's gone. Uh, Mayor Young, um, he and I had a contentious relationship when I was on the city council because um, <laughs> I have a brain. I will use it. I will not go along with stuff just because everybody else is. <laughs> Let me tell you what he did. So he called me. He says, I want you to come to the Manuga and Mansion and I want you to come sit down and talk with me. All right. So I showed up at the Manuga. Okay, wondering if I'm going to get assassinated, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a bullet in the brain or whatever. <laughs> but, but I'm just kidding. All right. So, so, so I, showed up, I showed up at the Manuga and Mansion. And if you're a newcomer, and, and this, I'm not speaking any disrespectfully of you, okay? Uh, if you're a new Coleman, you know that uh, any sentence that Coleman said, he added some colorful adjectives with. That was just his way. That's just who he was. That's who he was, right? So I'm sitting there in the Manugian, right? He comes down the stairs. 
downstairs, he sat down at the couch where I'm sitting. My brother sat down in his big chair. I sat down on the couch. And he's, he says, Butler, you bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> he says, no, nah, he talked that way to everybody. I knew that. He said, Butler, you bleep, bleep, bleep. I want you to know I respect you. He said, because the rest of these bleep, 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 bleeps are just do whatever. <laughs> he said, they're the greatest show on earth, is what he used to say. Okay, they're the greatest show on earth. But you bleep, 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 you do X, Y, Z. I want you to know I respect you, boy. That's the first thing he told me. He said, I respect you. He said, so sometimes, man, you got to work together. He said, and I will show you what I'm doing and why. And so there were times we did. We teamed up on stuff, me and him. Hallelujah, and got stuff done. Right? Now, all his people below him considered me an enemy, but me and him, we was cool. Scripture said it. Amen? You know God can take your enemy and make them at peace with you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read a few more Proverbs, chapter 19. Chapter 19, verse 23 says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that has it shall remain, that's the word abide, satisfied. He will not be visited with evil. Well, it sure isn't that the enemy is not trying to bring him evil, but what's happened is that he's got a hedge of protection around him. This is why you want to live right. It's the reason why you want to do things God's way. reason why you want to be patient and wait sometimes if that's necessary. Amen? Because you are helping your own self trust God. And know what he said. He said he will remain satisfied. Glory to God. It's one thing to live but you're not satisfied. It's another thing to live and be satisfied. I said this to the men, of course, also, I think. I did, yeah. I did at the man camp. Uh, I told them, I said, uh, at where I am in my station in life right now, this is the best time I've ever lived in my life is right now. I did tell them that, right? In other words, praise God, I'm satisfied. Not satisfied from the point that I'm ready to leave. But I'm satisfied, praise God, is that, hallelujah, things are where they should be because yes. yes. I'm where I should be Hallelujah. and the result is things are where they ought to be and so life for me is no struggle at all yes. no struggle at all just praise God hallelujah I get up every day and say Lord thank you for a wonderful yes. day today I don't care if it's yes. eight tenths of snow Thank you, Lord. Praise God. If you know how I hate eight, eight, eight inches of snow, you would know that's saying something. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Chapter 22. Hallelujah. Yeah, give me three more hallelujah, somebody. So we're opening up this, this uh, study, which we're going to do on Wednesday nights for a while. And we're going to learn some wisdom things from Proverbs so that you can hear, receive, believe, speak, and act on them and have the result. All right, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. By humility, there it is again, okay? And the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. And life or good life. Life. Amen. Amen. By humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. Well, keep a finger there. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. Praise the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 5. Now let's take a look here at verse 5 and 6. Likewise, you younger, or you young folk, submit yourselves unto the elder. You know, if you don't learn submission, everybody has to learn submission because everybody has a boss. And if you can't learn how to deal with a boss, you can't make it in this world. 
Everybody has a boss. Now, I'm the boss here, but I have a boss. And I have submitted myself, even though my spiritual father has gone home to Jesus, I su submitted myself to another man of God. And I told him, you can slap me upside the head, whatever you need to do, if that's what I need. And I will bow down and not be offended. I will take correction. Everybody got to have a boss. When you see people running around and ministers running around and they don't, they're not accountable to nobody, you already know they're full of uh, lack of humility, they're full of pride, and they're on their way to a problem. You need to get out of there. Did you hear what I said? Everybody got to submit to somebody. It's not just wives submit to the husband, but a good wife will learn to submit to her husband. The husband has to submit to the Lord. Right? All right, so he says here. So likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Learn to submit to even your brother. And be clothed with that humility. Why? God opposes the proud. And he gives manifestation of the power of the spirit to the humble. That's what grace is. Manifestation of the Holy Ghost come to people who humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. Verse 6 says, humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand that he may elevate you in due time. What's the due time? There is a time that is your time. Now, you can miss that window of opportunity with pride. Amen. But there is a time that God has for you for elevation. But there's not a period at the end of that, my English teacher back there. There ain't a period there. What is an English teacher? Colon right there, right? So, we ain't done talking, right? So, the next verse says, casting, what's, what's the next word? What does all mean? Everything. All of it. Yes. Casting all your marimna, all your worries, fears, concerns, all of them yes. upon him. Why? Yes. Well, you would know that he cares for you if you knew enough about him. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. You would know he ain't, he's not the one who didn't kill your parents because he needed a flower in heaven. Time I hear stuff like that. I just, I just be wanting to go up, say, go up there and punch the preacher in the mouth. You just, you just harming all these people, dude, yeah. standing behind telling that lie up here. Right. I can't do that, of course. I got to walk in love in Jesus' name. But, but I'm just telling you, with my mind, I should go up there and give you one pow. Why? Because you hurt my brothers and sisters with that lie. Yeah. Amen. So there is a time for you. Now, you have, now, this also requires two minutes. This requires a little patience on your part and trust in God. Okay? Because whatever God's dealing with you about, this may not be the elevation time yet. See, you, you, if you cannot humble yourself to another man, if you can't work for somebody else, you can't have your own place. You can't have your own ministry. You can't have your own job yet. You're not ready. You will crash and burn. If you can't listen to me, you can't listen to nobody, especially I'm talking to ministers. If you can't listen to me, you can't listen to nobody. Hallelujah. Why? I speak for God. I go right to his word and give you chapter and verse. Hallelujah. Now, there's something up I, if I didn't do that, but I do that. You lying, you walk out of here and say that I don't. So you lying. Amen. Chapter 23. Let's read verse 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Don't be looking at Hollywood. Amen. Music, rappers, billionaires. Don't be looking at sinners and think, oh, I wish I had that. I wish I was that. No, you don't. If you ever really pay any attention to all these people, they have some big problems. Yeah. And in time, they have some really bad things happening to them on this sixth marriage. Yeah. The kids all jacked up. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they may have a lot of money and they may have a lot of fame, but they have no peace. 
and life without peace. Because you cannot find joy in money or drink or drugs or women or men or stage productions or any of that. They're all temporary. None of them last. The only thing that's lasting is God Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 There's only one way to real peace and joy, and that's following God's way. Operating in the fear of the Lord, which is to So he says, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord. How long? Every day. All day. So examine yourself. Am I walking in the fear of the Lord? You see, to hate evil is not to tolerate evil. And certainly to hate evil is not to support evil. You know how many Christians support evil? How many Christians support abortion? Don't you know abortion is evil? You don't know abortion is evil? You have not read the Bible. You can give yourself 20 different reasons why it's okay. Your word is below his. When you support it, you are an accessory to it. Amen. When you enable it, you are a, a someone who is tied to it. Amen. Oh, that got me in trouble with a whole lot of people because I've been saying that for decades. I didn't start. Just start. Amen? Amen. So then what followed individuals and nations and this nation, if you go against God's way and you do what Israel did when they sacrificed their children, ever read the scripture, what happened to them in the Old Testament? And then look at where you are now in your country and see, do you see things that are very close to it? Why? Why did they do this? Because they have no fear of the Lord. So they love evil, pride. They're very arrogant. They love the evil way. They ain't got no problem with the forward mind. So all of us stand judgment before God as individuals. I'm going to say I've been saying this for decades. I have proved it many a day from the scripture, many a day. You will stand before God as an individual, as families, as cities, as nations. Amen? Amen. All of that. Goat nations and sheep nations. Remember the scriptures on that? Remember Israel? Blessed, Israel cursed. Remember what happened when they had righteous kings and unrighteous kings? I mean, the Bible's loaded with all this stuff. All right, all right. The Bible's loaded with all this. And so I don't understand why. What's going on? Why not? How come you don't understand? It's right there in the book. There it is. Read it. It's right here. Stop looking for another excuse. But why is it okay for me to do this? Because there is always a price to sin. And there is a blessing to righteousness. Hallelujah. 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 The reason why you get to, the reason why you get to, at the end of the day, you get to the tribulation after the rapture and all the stuff that happens, you know why you get to have all that? And all that bad stuff happens, the end of it, the last three and a half years in particular, but the, the whole seven years, is because the earth, the people in the earth keep going opposite the fear of the Lord. Okay, and how these things work, 
is. Everything, both sides work this way. Final nugget today. They work this way. When you first start walking this way, okay, you'll find the blessings will be, they'll come. Or if I go the other way, the curse will be little because God's merciful. But the longer you continue to walk this way, the more blessings or the more curse. If you continue this on for most of your life, followed by your kid's life, that generation, followed by your city, followed by your state, followed by your nation, eventually you are so far down the road against God, the only thing that can happen is, as the scripture says, when the cup of sin overflows, judgment comes. And with that last seven years, it's the ultimate judgment. So I would ask you this question. The seven churches in Asia Minor, I'm giving you just something to research. Since you're my Wednesday night crew, and the Wednesday night crew is my studious crew. I thought y'all would say amen to that. <laughs> maybe not, I guess maybe not. But I thought my Wednesday night crew was my study, it was my studious crew. So I'll just give you one riddle to spend some time with. Well, there's the seven churches in Asia Minor in the book of Revelations. Why is only the church of Philadelphia the only one, he says, I will keep you from that hour of temptation. Weren't the other six also judges? Why only the one judge? What does that tell you? Other verses in the Bible are like that. Maybe we might study them and find them out. Since orthodoxy, Christian orthodoxy, is that once you get saved, it doesn't really matter. You will go up in the rapture. Really? Even if? Regardless to what you're doing? What were the six other churches doing? That there's only one of the churches in Asia Minor. He only said, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. Amen. Let's all stand. Anybody getting anything out of the opening with Proverbs? Oh, there's a whole lot more of that coming. Oh, Lord. So if nothing else, how about we operate in a certain way? We operate in the fear of the Lord. We do what we... Do I hate, God said. And if God hates it, I hate it. That's my daddy. If my daddy says I hate that, I'm with my daddy. I hate it too. Every head bowed, please, every eye closed in prayer. So I trust tonight you will go home and you will then begin to check yourself out. That's what you're supposed to do when you go to church. You're supposed to then go home and check yourself out from the message and say, okay, how does this message apply to me? Or am I coddling any evil instead of hating it? Am I full of pride? Am I arrogant? Do I think I know as much as the Bible? Am I following any evil way in any subject? And what about my mouth? Is my mouth in line with the word of God so that the Holy Ghost can move? Praise God. Angels of God can work in my behalf. Hallelujah. That's why every head's bowed, every eyes closed in prayer. That's the question I'm asking for you Christians. Amen. And ask yourself these questions. Check yourself out on these questions. Because... The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. The fear of the Lord causes you to have peace, even with your enemies. The fear of the Lord causes you to live longer than you would have lived. It adds to your days. A smart person will 
follow the fear of the Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for sharing us or sharing with us your word tonight. We are grateful for it, and we have ears to hear what the Spirit would say unto us. And while every head's bowed and every eye's clothed in prayer, if you have not made Jesus Christ Lord of your life and you're watching me tonight, all you have to do is ask him to come into your life because he wants you to live long. He wants you to be strong. He wants you blessed in every way. But he requires your cooperation. And it starts with your giving your life to him. And all you have to do is say this, something along these lines. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I'm lost. So come into my heart and save me now. I do believe you are the Savior. You are the highest authority of all. I believe you carried my sins. They put you in the grave and you got up from that grave. You're alive now. If you're out of fellowship with God, all you have to tell him is 1 John 1, 9. Lord, yeah, I missed it. And I acknowledge it to you and I'm asking you to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I come back to you right now. Help me to walk in the fear of the Lord. Just that simple. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Praise God. You drop that on, you're in right standing with God again. And you're back on the trail of the fear of the Lord and his blessing. Exaltation being exalted at due time. Health and healing in your body. Amen. Defense from the attack of the enemy. He didn't say he wouldn't attack. Just that he will not be able to win, hallelujah, by walking in the fear of the Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for this word tonight as we begin Proverbs. Open more the wisdom of God to us. We thank you in advance for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen. That was such an awesome service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there was blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you at the next service.